Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to build a little bit on my last video, pull back the curtain, so to speak, and give a sneak hey there, check it out. on a new piece of animation software that is about to launch in the coming month, Reillusion's iClone 8. The absolutely amazing team over at Reillusion has been nice enough to grant me early access to their beta program. And I'm really excited to take a closer look at what it has to offer. It boasts a ton of new features to help artists and creators like you and me animate our 3D characters easier and faster than ever before. Let's jump in. If you happen to watch some of my other videos on the channel, you may have noticed an influx of content about Reillusion. What? No. And that's because they're really excited about making a connection with the Blender community. Holy smokes, they're all in. They've been toiling away for the past couple of years working on this big update for not only iClone 8, as I'll talk about today, but Character Creator 4 as well. And in parallel, they have also been working at making sure that their software integrates seamlessly with Blender. Oh, that looks nice. I did a video just a couple of weeks ago on how this very integration works. If you're interested, card should be above if I don't forget, link below. And what's even crazier is that they're actually working on improving this integration right now. Oh wow, even better. With further development around the round trip pipeline, their iClone Blender data link plugin, and automatic Rigify mapping. Ultimately, the goal is to have the software all work together effortlessly so you can choose what workflow works best for you. I'll put a link below to their website and YouTube channel that have a whole bunch more details on all the upcoming developments if you are so inclined. So with all that said, let's take a look at iClone 8 and some of the new features it has to offer, how they work, and what it might mean for creators like you and me. So the first one we'll talk about today is rotoscoping. Very generally, for anyone that may not be familiar, rotoscoping is an animation technique where an animator traces an image over video footage frame by frame to produce an animation. Instead of tracing many images over a video reference frame by frame, in iClone, you just align your character with the video pose by pose. So why is this useful? This allows you to generate a convincing, natural animation quickly and easily without necessarily needing years and years of experience and study in the field of movement, which I can tell you right now, I definitely do not have. So how does it work? All you have to do is drag and drop an MP4 video file into the viewport like this, and then line up your character to each key pose of the video. Set a keyframe at each pose, and then iClone will fill in the gaps for you. Once you do one side, you can mirror everything over to the other very quickly by just selecting all the keyframes and pressing here on the mirror button. Once you have all of your keyframes set and mirrored, you can further use the transition curve preset menu to smooth everything out for a nice natural animation. So what does this ultimately mean for you and me? Now you can just get out your phone, record your own movements, drag them into the viewport, line up your character and set the keyframe, and iClone will do the rest. Now you can add your own personal touch and really make your product stand out from the rest. So the next feature I want to talk about is the Pose Mixer. Now it works exactly as it sounds. It mixes poses. Hey, thanks. It allows you to mix different preset poses together with just a few clicks. So why is this useful? By mixing and matching different parts of different poses, as you'll see in just a second, you can effectively build an almost limitless amount of pose configurations for your character very quickly without needing to manage move anything around. So how does it work? To start, you select a pose over on the left hand side here in the pose directory. This one's pretty good, but let's say for example we like the legs but want to see different arm positions. Over on the right in the edit motion layer box, you can then select the part or parts of the body you'd like to change. In this case, let's select the arms. Now back over on the left, you can select other poses and see how the new arm positions in those poses work with yours. At this point, you've just now configured your own custom pose, which you can save for future use. Similarly, if we like the arms but want to see different legs, just select the legs over in the edit motion layer box, then select a new pose from the directory, and voila, a different pose. You can also isolate selected parts of the pose and flip or mirror them to the other side for added customization. So what does this mean for you and me? Obviously, as mentioned before, this allows you to build an unlimited amount of poses with just one click. The ability to save these poses is also great as you can slowly build a custom library for future use, significantly speeding up your workflow. 
Next up is what Reillusion is coining as the character-centric timeline. What this is, is an expandable hierarchy of your animation data that can be toggled between either the part track or bone track. The part track is a little bit simpler and it allows you to select, edit, and control animation data on the basis of the different parts of the body, such as the torso, head, left arm, right arm, etc. The bones track is more detailed and allows you to select, edit, and control animation data on the basis of the different bones of the armature, so a lot more granular. So why is this useful? It gives you the option to change between the blocking out of bigger movements and fine tuning of smaller movements. Generally, in animation, it's advised you start big and end small, and this feature allows you to do just that. So how does it work? Let's say, for example, I have my character swinging her legs together like this. With the simpler part track, I can quickly select one entire leg, the thigh, calf, foot, and toes, and offset all of their movement all at once by pulling the animation data on the timeline. Now I have the same swing as before, but it's offset quick and easy customization. If I wanted to go a little bit farther, however, and fine tune the movement even more, I can now toggle to the bone track and select the thigh, calf, foot, and toes individually here and offset them one by one. This allows you to create an even more detailed, nuanced, and layered animation than before, as you can see. Similar to what we see with the body, there are also different levels to the expandable hierarchy for the face. The first level, which is the most most basic is called just that, basic track. There is a new eye blink feature in this mode where you can control blinking and eye movements better. The second level is the feature track. This has more options organized by the logical parts of the face, such as the brow, nose, cheek, and jaw. And then finally, in the third level is the morph track. This is the most granular, giving you detailed options to select for each part of the face on the left. After making your selection on the left, you can then adjust the intensity of the blend shape on the right using the morph sliders. Here you can see the different levels of detail you can get between the basic and morph levels. With the morph level, obviously you're able to introduce a lot more nuance and subtle movements. So what does this mean for you and me? This allows you to better organize your animation workflow and simplify the editing process. You can select and edit entire body parts all at once very easily for the blockout stage, and then switch to the smaller details when you need to. You can also go back and forth between tracks, which gives you flexibility in your workflow, and is just great for streamlining and improving efficiency in your work. Another new feature is the IKFK blend feature within the timeline. Very generally, animating an FK is useful for natural arcing movements, and IK is particularly useful for when you want to have a part of your character plant or pin against another surface, such as a hand pushing against a box, or perhaps the most common, a foot planting to the ground, as we'll see in a moment. So why is this useful? What this new feature allows is for you to transition between FK and IK animation data smoothly. Often when animating, your character will interact with different objects and surfaces as it moves. And so being able to blend between FK and IK seamlessly is a very important element of convincing animation. So how does it work? Here is the FK animation data for the feet, denoted by the gray arrows. And this represents the natural swing arc motion we have from before. And here is the IK animation data for the feet, denoted by the blue circles. This represents the character landing on their feet and planting to the ground, as you'll see in just a second. So without the IK-FK blend, what happens when we transition from the swing to the plant is that you can see the feet sort of go through the ground. It doesn't look very natural or realistic. In fact, it just looks downright bad. By copying the blue IK data over like this, we can blend the IK and FK animations together, and you'll see we now have a much nicer foot plant effect than before. So what does this mean for you and me? This will give your animations a much more convincing look by reducing odd interactions, such as feet going through the ground or hands clipping through objects. And the last new feature I wanna talk about today is curve editing. iClone's curve editor allows you to graphically edit your animations using curves and handles. This is how the pros do it. 
So why is this useful? Editing your animations with the curve editor allows you to really fine tune your movements and take them to the level that of the professionals. I mean, we're talking Pixar stuff here now. So how does it work? It's very easy to use. In the curve editor, you just need to select the bones of your armature and the plot of its movement will then be displayed. You can then select the handles on the graph to change the nature of the movement very easily. First example here is introducing an arc to the character's shift in weight. You can see the linear version on the left, just a simple left to right movement, which looks okay. But with the edits we did in the curve editor, you can see how the arc really makes it look a lot more interesting and dynamic. Here we're implementing a follow through for a bounce back on the hand, again makes the movement a lot more interesting and dynamic than before and we don't have to try and animate this by hand manually which would be a lot harder and time consuming here you can introduce eye darting or stepping which creates a nice sense of energy and urgency to the movement and finally introducing some exaggeration making your original blocked out movements bigger to really make them pop Anyways, that's it for this one, guys. I hope that was interesting and gave you some ideas on how you might elevate your animations or games with this software. Let me know if you have any questions below. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped, and we'll see you in the next one.